Throughout the world, countless mysterious artifacts have been discovered that defy any conventional explanation. And while skeptics may insist that proof of alien visitation could only come in the form of some highly advanced technology, ancient astronaut theorists suggest even the most mundane items can serve as evidence. In fact, in 1936, a local couple in London, Texas, were walking along a creek when they came upon one of the most puzzling ancient artifacts ever found, a hammer. It was a prehistoric hammer, if you will, with part of the handle still in place inside some very old rock. And part of the handle actually is starting to go through a process called colification. It's where uh, you have inorganic material and organic material changing into coal. Now, how old is this hammer? The hammer itself was found in the Travis Formation. It's a concretion of sandstone. And it usually takes about 140 million years for this to form. Who was here 140 million years ago? The modern day archeology span suggests that we've only been around for about 10,000 years. So this falls into the category of out of place artifacts. Around the world, there are so-called out of place artifacts, commonly referred to as oo-parts. And those oo-parts are challenging mainstream archeology span because they do not fit into the accepted chronology of what mainstream science says. Could a 140 million year old hammer really have been discovered in Texas? Skeptics argue that the couple who came upon this hammer must have been mistaken about where they found it. But could there be so-called impossible artifacts whose authenticity is beyond question? New York City, February 2017. At New York University, Giorgio Suclos meets with art collector Jared Collins, who is in possession of a 2,000-year-old elongated skull. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. The skull is incredibly well-preserved, and Jared is having it tested at the university to find out if it might possibly contain abnormalities that indicate it is something other than human. He agreed to meet Giorgio outside of the anthropology lab for a first look at the skull. So how did this come to be in your possession? Well, it's not actually mine. It is on loan to me. Me and one of my colleagues contacted a museum and we asked them, do you have an elongated skull in your collection? And they said they have just one, this one. And have they told you anything about it? Actually, like the provenance? Strangely, this has been in storage for decades. They have never tested it. They had very little information on it. They know it's absolutely Paracas. So this skull was found in the Paracas region of Peru. That's right. But no real modern testing has ever been done on this. Oh, this is amazing. So let's go, right? OK. NYU professor of anthropology, Dr. Todd Desatel, agreed to conduct a forensic evaluation of the elongated skull. I've seen casts, I've never seen one in person. Okay. Wow. That is freaky. I mean, I just can't come up with another term. I love that your first reaction is that it's freaky, because I agree well, with I you. I mean, look at it. It's, That's... it's quite bizarre. Let me just uh, move it over to the sterile bench surface. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's very fascinating, besides the shape. <laughs> <laughs> the sagittal suture looks like it has completely fused. I'm holding it, I'm looking at it, and it's just been completely obliterated. The sagittal suture is the scene where the two parietal bones of the skull come together. Although the markings may be faint due to fusing over time, all human skulls are expected to have some evidence of this feature. So it is curious that this skull does not. 
nor do the skulls of a number of other mysterious specimens that have been collected and examined by various experts. One of the great enigmas of planet Earth is that all over the world, we find skeletons with people having these elongated skulls. For centuries, various native cultures have engaged in the ritual practice of artificially elongating their skulls by tightly wrapping the heads of their children through infancy. However, these skulls still feature evidence of the cranial sutures. OK, let's move on to extracting some tooth and bone powder to get DNA out of that. OK, okay. excellent. In order to obtain the needed genetic material uh. from the artifact, Dr. Disotel will need to remove a tooth and drill into it to extract the samples. The analysis of the material will determine the sex, ancestral lineage of both the father and the mother, and any DNA anomalies when compared with the current human genetic database. Looks pretty good. We will pack this up and send it off, and in four to six weeks, they should have the result. Four to six weeks, OK. Thank you very okay. much. Really right. appreciate your okay. input on this. Take care, Thanks a lot. You got it. Los Angeles, California, April 2017. All right, Todd, you got the results? Yeah, and they're very, very interesting. Two months after their initial examination, Giorgio is online with Dr. Disotel to receive the results of the DNA test they performed on the elongated skull. They did get a good, clean DNA profile from the maternally inherited DNA. So this particular specimen is actually not found in the New World, not found amongst Native Americans, and it's typically found amongst Europeans and Middle Easterners. In fact, the 100% match was to a Scottish individual. This makes no sense whatsoever. Really? In a South American skull? This is all very strange. That could mean that people from Europe got to South America 1,500 years earlier than we currently understand that. On January 18th, 2017, at the National History Museum of Transylvania, ancient astronaut theorists Giorgio Tsoukalos and Eric von Daniken were offered a rare opportunity to get a first-hand look at the Wedge of Ayu. Museum curator Anna Gruya has taken it out of a storage locker where it has been deliberately hidden from the public since the early 1970s. So this is it? Oh, OK. This okay. is strange. It, it's very heavy. Giorgio, take it. It's, it's, it's heavy. Wow. This was found at a depth of 10 meters, which is about 30 feet, in the ground. Yes. Yes, and here, this is the, where they took the sample out, and yeah. here to make the analysis. And here you see two pieces that are broken off, sort of. So maybe it was attached or something. But very strange. So what does the museum have to say about this? Uh, this is a very strange piece. It is, it is a strange piece for us as well. Uh, as historians, we do not consider it a historical object that we're used to. We don't know what it was used for, and we acknowledge these uncertainties about its dating and its composition as well. But you see this patina over this whole object, and this creates another problem. Yes, and because you cannot fake a patina. It's impossible to artificially create a patina. The patina is a thin coating of various metal compounds that forms on the surface of the metal during exposure to atmospheric elements. The older the object, the thicker the patina layer will be. It takes hundreds, if not thousands of years for a thick layer of patina, as this apparently is, for it to develop. Yes, we agree. There are two basic problems. One, that aluminum was not invented at the age when we presume this was in use. 
And second, it's the patina, as you noted. Which speaks for the date, for the, yes. for the age of it. Thank you very much for uh, showing us this object, because I know that there was a time uh, when nobody knew where it was, somewhere in a box in the back, which means present-day archaeology has a problem. And they're doing magnificent work. But when something like this comes along, you know, we should investigate this and not put it in a box in the back. Definitely. It did depend on mentalities and official position. Yes. <laughs> it isn't currently exhibited uh, because we have to admit as historians that we do not know more details about it. Mm -hmm. For us, it's just baffling at this point. But taking the, the logic further, uh, this conflicting information could have just two solutions so far. One, that it is really not so old and the context is irrelevant and the patina was somehow produced in special circumstances. So it's a new object, strangely preserved, let's say. And the second option is, of course, that it's not of terrestrial origin. Hero Mountains are very old mountains stretching from uh, the Russian north to the Russian south. Dozens of visitors to the Ural Mountains have reported strange sightings of fireballs and cigar-shaped crafts. But even stranger is what has been found in the earth here. In 1991, geologists led an expedition into the mineral-rich Urals in hopes of locating gold deposits. While excavating sites near the Kozim Narada and Balbanyu rivers, the scientists discovered something unexpected. At depths of over 30 feet, they unearthed a scattering of tiny metal coils and springs. That soil wasn't touched for hundreds of thousands or more years. The area where it was found was probably tens of kilometers around. It's as if something exploded thousands of years ago and the fragments were lying all over the place. Their shape resembled manufactured technology rather than naturally occurring minerals. The smallest pieces were found to be tungsten, a metal used in spacecrafts and missiles due to its ability to withstand high temperatures. They are these metal spirals that consist of copper, but also tungsten and molybdenum, which are both very rare metals. We're looking at nanotechnology. When you look down at them in a microscope, they're extremely regular in their structure. They're very nice coils. The only way we could make them even now is with machine-guided technology. You could not do this by hand. What we're seeing here is proof that someone had advanced technology sufficient to build the type of circuitry that we normally only see in semiconductors. Computer chips, high technology equipment, using metals that are not commonly known. So these spirals are clear evidence that someone had a very advanced civilization right here on Earth near Archaea.